All right, today we're going to be going through carburetors on a 1982 Honda Goldwing 1100. This has got obviously four carburetors here. We've got them off of the bike and we're gonna go through and clean them. I'm gonna show you how to rebuild them. Just a couple different tricks on uh, how to go through these and inspect and what to look for. So we've got obviously our intake here. Uh, it's gonna separate out then into four different carburetors. You can pull these apart, but to clean these carburetors, you don't technically have to do that. Um, if you're trying to get them into an ultrasonic cleaner or uh, some sort of a cleaning tank and you don't have this large of a cleaning tank, then you will have to separate them and it just splits right down the middle here. And then there's also splits here then you can break them apart even farther. If, if you can just split them in half right here and uh, separate them in half, um, maybe that'll give you enough room. Otherwise you can take in each individual carburetor apart from the back side here, there's uh, Phillips screws holding those on. So throttle cables over here and your choke assembly is here. So throttle cables come in here. Um, when you when you turn or when you twist your throttle there, what's gonna happen is, um, and you can see there, your butterflies open up. Might be a little bit hard for you to see that, but your butterflies open up and they're all four gonna do that at the exact same time. So you do have to sync these. You will wanna sync them at some point to make sure all carburetors are working properly and engaging at the same time, the correct airflow is flowing through there. Um, and you, there's adjustment screws that look similar to this on each one of those carburetors. So pull your throttle there, butterflies open up, adjust your, your carburetors with these screws here individually. So adjust your idle here. You've got a flat screwdriver or uh, a lot of times you can use your fingers. Essentially what that's doing is turning your throttle open. So if we we're gonna turn your idle up, we're gonna turn this clockwise. What you're doing is just basically opening that up. Now you don't wanna obviously uh, adjust your idle this much. You just wanna do small increments at a time. You do wanna make sure that your bike is completely warmed up when you do start to uh, adjust your idle. Your choke assembly is here and you can see uh, your two black um, tabs here, your two black knobs here are what your choke is, where your machine is being choked at. So you've got your cable hooked up here would go into this, um, this holder here that's flipped around there. And when you pull your choke knob, it'll open those up just like that. So that's your choke assembly there. Now I'm gonna go ahead, uh, we're gonna pull probably this carburetor apart, doesn't really matter which one. They're all gonna look almost identical with the exception of one carburetor. I guess it's this one that's slightly different, but the internals are gonna be pretty much the same. You can tell by the bottom here. Um, we've got this plunger assembly here. Not a lot to this plunger. We've got three Phillips screws and um, and then you've got a plunger and a spring inside there. So not a lot to it. Actually, this, this will be the one that we take apart so I can show you that assembly. To take our bottom bowl off here, you've got three Phillips screws and this entire bowl will come off here. To drain your fuel, if you just wanna drain your fuel for the year or uh, to start a new year, maybe drain the fuel that's been sitting all winter. Now you can drain your fuel this way, just a couple turns uh, and this fuel will start to dump out your um, bottom bowl here and you can drain your bowl that way. This is a banjo bolt here which means it's got a, a fuel line running through or a line running through here. So you can see there's a small port there, it dumps out uh, up here so you don't have to take this screw completely out, you can. Any kind of uh, old fuel debris will dump then out the bottom of your bowl. You will have to do this on each individual carburetor to completely clean that fuel out. Now if your four wheeler or your uh, motorcycle has been sitting uh, for a while and you're needing to clean your carburetor, this isn't, this isn't gonna actually clean your carburetor at all. It's, all this is doing is draining your fuel out. So potentially if you put the wrong fuel in there, uh, maybe you've got a little bit of water in your fuel, uh, you can take and loosen this screw and drain the fuel out that way. But otherwise, if you're needing to clean it, you're gonna wanna pull this bottom bowl off. You've got three Phillips screws to pull this bowl. Each carburetor has three screws. And you can take then, and lift that bowl off. So there is your bowls off there. You can tell there's a little bit of discoloration there. No debris or anything is inside here. We've cleaned this carburetor already. You can see there's a little bit of buildup in there. This will actually just kind of clean itself out when you start running fuel through there. Um, any kind of large particles and stuff you'll obviously want to take out of there. These jets are extremely small. The orifices are extremely small on there. So any kind of debris that sits down in here will get sucked up through these jets and uh, could potentially plug a jet. So you wanna make sure you don't have anything sitting in there. Take carbon choke cleaner then, you can spray this all out. If you've got a rebuild kit, uh, you'll wanna replace this O-ring here. And it's got a 
fairly common for these to leak around here. So you do want to make sure that you replace that anytime you rebuild your carburetor. To pull this, pull this bottom plunger off here, like I said, not a lot underneath here, but I'll just do this quick. Three Phillips on here. And I like to keep my thumb over top of it. There's a rubber diaphragm underneath here that um, will sometimes dry out. It'll sometimes rip. So I keep my finger over top of it so it doesn't um, pop off of there, ripping that diaphragm. So we've got our cover there, we've got our spring, and then our diaphragm. And this you can just take and push out. And again, you want to make sure this isn't being held up here when you're pushing it out. Otherwise, you'll rip that diaphragm. So we're putting that back on there. You want to make sure that all the ports are lined up so you can see there. This is a little differently. You've got two orifices there. They want to line up with those uh, rubber tabs there. And then make sure that's completely seated going back together. All right, now to continue on with our carburetor, we've got uh, our float here. This is going to slide up and down. What that's doing is uh, when that fuel starts coming in through your needle and seat area here, that, uh, that fl as that bowl fills up, it'll raise this float and it'll shut that fuel off right here. So what that means is you want to make sure that your needle and seat area is good. You want to take your uh, a pick or a small screwdriver, push this pin out, and then pull that pin out completely. You can lift this float up and inspect this needle. Make sure there's no grooves on here. You can pull that off of there. Make sure there's no grooves on that needle. Make sure that rubber tab is in really good condition. And you want to inspect your seat area here. Make sure it's not squared. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes dirt and debris will sit down in here, causing your float to be held open, causing fuel just to con constantly just dump into your uh, bowl area and then dump into your motor. So fuel comes in here from your fuel tank. So you can take compressed air then and blow through this port here. You want to make sure that uh, air is flowing through here. Uh, also, Carbon choke cleaner, you can you can squirt into this port here and it'll come out your needle and seat area there. You can replace this individually and replace this. A lot of times the needle and seats will come with a jet kit. Um, if it's a cheaper jet kit, sometimes it won't be included, but um, it will typically tell you if it is or isn't. We've got our main jet here. It's the larger of the two jets that you have on this uh, in each carburetor. This main jet here is this side, but the orifice is uh, fairly large compared to your pilot jet so you want to make sure that you can hold this up to light you can see all the way through it it's not big enough to where you're gonna be able to stick something like this through it you got to use uh, a jet cleaner to clean those out and even some of these are gonna be uh, too small or too large to stick through there so not a very big orifice you do want to make sure that you can see through there no uh, no debris or anything sitting inside there so fuel gut gets gummed up a lot of times it'll plug those jets up and then you won't be able to, fuel won't be able to flow through there. Next, we've got our pilot jet. It's down inside this port here. I like to use a small screwdriver, but large enough to where it's actually going to uh, completely seat on that uh, pilot jet. You can turn it off without rounding it off, and I'll show you what I mean there. Just screw that out, and then we can dump it, flip it over, and there's your pilot jet there. Now this orifice is extremely small. Uh, you, but you do want to make sure that you can see through it, blow through it with compressed air and carbon choke cleaner. Now, if you, I said you want to use a screwdriver like this because it's going to cover the largest area on that head of that jet. If you take and grab a very, very small screwdriver, a small flat screwdriver, such as this one here, you'll, when you take and turn that jet, you'll actually turn inside of that jet and you'll waller that uh, jet out, that hole there. Will, you'll either break these tabs off here or you'll damage up this entire assembly. So that's why I like to use a larger flat screwdriver, um, but obviously one that's gonna still fit down inside that hole there. So that's a pilot jet. You wanna make sure that you can blow through there with compressed air, um, and you can use carbon choke cleaners there as well. I'm gonna flip this over before I put this uh, bottom bowl back on. I'm gonna flip over it and I'm gonna show you the top side of this carburetor. I think it's important to go through these at the same time. So. Two Phillips screws on this top cap here. You can pull those screws, take this cap and you can just kind of work it off like that there. And you've got your cap. Make sure there's no debris down in here. Make sure there's um, any kind of uh, dirt or anything is cleaned out of there. You've got your spring there. 
and then you've got your slide here, and then you've got your needle. So you wanna make sure that this is all cleaned out, make sure these ports are cleaned out really well, and then you can actually take them. The reason why I like to leave that, uh, the bottom bowl off and clean this at the same time is because I take carbon choke cleaner and I'll blow through all these ports. I'll blow in down here through the intake assembly and let that all run out. You will have to open this up, open your slide up here or your, uh, your butterfly, like you're turning your throttle there so that that fuel or that carb cleaner will dump out the bottom of that carburetor. So if you leave this shut like that, you can see there that that fuel is not going to, or any kind of cleaner or anything, it's just gonna sit down inside here. So that's why I like to take and open this up so that that fuel can come out of there. We've got a ring here, and you wanna make sure that this is put on the right direction. You've got your lip facing up. And again, make sure all these ports are cleaned out really well. Now for your needle here and your slide, you can take and you can actually replace this needle. You've got a plastic cap up top here. Take and I can, you can pull that out. Just pull the plastic cap is all that you're pulling right now. And it's got an O-ring that seals it up. So make sure that O-ring's in good condition. You got to grab another flat screwdriver and there's a screw inside there that'll hold this needle in place. And then I take and I push that up so I can grab a hold of that cap there. And then you've got your needle down inside there. This needle, you can get different sizes, but it's not adjustable. So grab your screw then. Little flathead screw there. Kind of more of a cap. Snug that up. Now your, your slide and your needle will only go down one direction because of this groove there but you do want to make sure that it slides all the way down into that needle area. Take the spring then, set it on top. The key in is going to be, I don't know that it really matters, but the key in, where it says key in here is going to be um, closer to the inside of those carburetors. You can take and put that cap on there. That spring is not loaded enough to where it's going to push that cap off. But you want to make sure that it's seated properly. Snug that up, then we can flip that carburetor back over and put that bottom side back together. You want to make sure that when you've got it flipped over like that, that you don't put too much pressure on these, this area here, so you don't break any of these posts off. So our float here with our needle, and it doesn't matter which direction that goes on there, they're both the exact same. This float is a little bit adjustable, or it is adjustable, but you just want to do it little small increments at a time, and um, check your manual for the specs on that, because you don't want your bike running lean or too rich. So flip that back in there. We we'll slide that pin back in there. Our main jet here. And you can actually pull your main jet holder, which is here. And there's your main jet holder. Make sure that's cleaned out. No debris on the inside of there. Make sure all those ports are cleaned out really well. You can put that back in and then put your main jet back on top. Snug that up, grab the pilot jet, put that down there. Again, use a little bit larger of a screwdriver, as large as you can, that'll still fit down in there. And then make sure that post sits right down inside that rubber tube there. And we can go ahead and set that bowl back on there. Snug these up. All right. And that is the carburetor assembly on a 1982 Honda Goldwing 1100. If you have questions or comments, make sure you leave those below. If you've liked this video, uh, please share it and subscribe and leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching.